Hi, I'm Lino Grandi, 3D artist from Otoy, the producers of Octane Render. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use motion blur in Octane for Blender. So we have this starship flying through this landscape. And right now there is no motion blur applied. Of course, RTX is on and the render is super fast. We want to use a motion blur for this shot. So first thing to do is to go into the uh, kernel settings and activate motion blur. We have some option here like the shutter time and the sub frame star, sub frame and percentage, but also the shutter alignment, which could be you know set to after, before, or symmetric. So motion blur now is active, but we can't see any effect in the preview. That's because you can only see motion blur in the final render. So we can try to render this frame, but we will notice that still we don't have any camera or object motion blur effect. This is the denoised uh, version of the same frame. Even if we activate motion blur for the scene, uh, we still need to specify uh, the same setting for the object. So let's go into the object properties and let's look for the motion blur option for this object. So now it's active and we can finally render the image. And now you can see how the motion blur is there, perfectly denoised and really, really fast to, uh, to, to be rendered. You also notice that even if I didn't uh, activate motion blur for other objects in the scene, it's still there uh, because um, those objects are not moving. So we, what we see uh, is just the, the camera motion effect while you know the starship is moving so we uh, need to specify that we want motion blur uh, for it and once you have at least one object in the scene with motion blur on then camera motion blur is going of course to work for any object in the scene let's take a look at the several options that the motion blur offers let's start with shutter time Shutter time uh, allows to adjust the motion blur amount. As we increase shutter time, we will make the motion blur effect more visible. I have prepared some renders showing the results of different values. So in this case, we're using a value of 10%. Now, this is the result with 50% and this is 100%. So in this case, we're basically keeping the shutter open for one whole second, which of course provides some massive motion blur in the image. If you need to match uh, a real camera shutter time with the relative uh, option in Octane, you need to use this formula. Okay, so 1 50th uh, in this case translates into 50% in Octane, uh, assuming that we're uh, using a 25 FPS frame rate for our scene. Now, shutter alignment. It can be set on after, before, and symmetric. Uh, this option specifies how the motion blur effect is calculated in relation to the previous or next frames. I've prepared three renders showing the three different options for shutter alignment. So in this case, we're looking at the uh, before option. This is symmetrical and this is after. So you can clearly see the, the visual difference before, symmetrical, after. I like to 
uh, explain a little better what the shutter alignment option does. So let's assume that um, our shutter stays open for 10 frames, which of course is depending on the shutter time option. And let's also assume that we are rendering frame 50. So we will have a again a range of 10 frames for the shutter to be open. And if we set uh, this option to before, it will capture the 40 to 50 frame range. Again, we're considering frame 50 in this case. If we using a symmetrical uh, shutter, the range will be from 45 to 55. And if we are using an, the after option, of course, we, the range will slide to the end from frame 50 to frame 60. Then we have subframe start and subframe end. Um, this is the way uh, shutter speed is simulated in Octane. I prepared three renders uh, for the subframe start and option with different values. So in this frame, I've used the standard values that goes from 0 to 100%. Here we can see the result with 50% and 100%. And this is the result using uh, subframe start set to 80% and subframe end set to 100%. Now, what about motion blur and deforming characters or objects? I have this animation here I imported from Mixamo. And there is no motion blur at the moment, only depth of field, which is you know, so fast to calculate. And so let's proceed and let's activate motion blur. I'm going to set this to 40% to make uh, the motion blur effect uh, quite strong. And now I'm going to select the, the object, the character, and from the object properties, I'm going to turn on motion blur. So if I render a frame now, still we don't have any motion blur. That's because this is a deforming object, and we need to specify that in the motion blur options. So let's try to render now. And we can see our motion blur effect perfectly working for the character. There is something very important to be said about this option here, the object type. And, you know, since uh, to, to optimize the speed when you're rendering uh, an animation sequence, you can specify which object is static, which object is just uh, moving, rotating, or, you know, it's, it's scaled, so transformed and which objects uh, needs a full update of the geometry since they are deforming. Um, so object type set to auto normally works well for static and movable objects, but for um, deforming objects, you really have to specify the object type and set it to reshapable proxy. This way, when rendering the animation, the shape will be updated for each frame. So if you experience some issues when rendering animation sequences where your objects are statics, even the ones that should be deformed, well, check this option because it's super important. So not directly motion blur um, related, but still a very important information. Another very important uh, note about motion blur in Octane for Blender, it's about uh, using the subdivision modifier. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface 
Okay. And if I try to render motion blur now, I will not get any motion blur. This is always the depth of field effect. So I I found out that to solve this issue, you just have to apply any vertex weight um, modifier. So I normally use the vertex weight edit, but you know you can really use whatever you want. You can have to place this modifier after the subdivision. So now if I render, even if I'm using a subdivision. I can get a correct motion blur. So knowing this can solve some potential issues that you may find while working on your projects. There's something really important to know when you're dealing with um, projects, dealing with spinning uh, objects like this propeller or you know car tires and so on. So I prepared this scene to show uh, how to correctly set up this kind of animation. So assuming that um, the speed uh, it's okay and realistic, I have motion blur active here. So let's take a look at the motion blur options. Set to after, shutter time is really high so we can capture a lot of frames. And if we, of course, the Motion blur is active on the object, so we can render this image, and we immediately notice some issues. You know, this cat here is not exactly what we would expect. Um, how to solve this? There is this option here, steps, that lets us, you know, increase the number of steps for the motion blur. So by default, it's set to one. If we set it to two, we're getting a better result, but still not what we would expect. So we can set it to three or even better four, and probably with four, we get what we want. Um, we can increase the steps once again and get a perfect result. So this is something very important to know uh, when you notice that your spinning object is producing uh, some odd effect uh, when motion blur is applied. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. And see you next time. Cheers.